everybody. I'm doing a session for a client. I'm going to be sharing psychic wisdom and energy healing. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, um, please come visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. Okay, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to connect with you today. And thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. All right, I'm going to read your goals out loud and then we'll see what comes up, all right? So you say, hi, Abby. I'd like you to take a look at my sacral chakra. I feel like I need a lot of healing here. You're welcome to share on YouTube if you feel it will help others. Thank you for all you do. All right, so your sacral chakra, you just feel it. Like you really need some healing for your sacral chakra. Okay. Be curious to see what it looks like on the energy side of things. All right. You ready for this? Okay, here we go. Okay, what is the most meaningful wisdom and healing that I can share with you today for your sacral chakra? Any messages? that can help you as well bring balance to this. Huh. So the first thing that I experience is I run into a really tall, skinny tree and it's black and it's covered in like a black gooey tar substance. <sighs> really, really tall tree. Something making me uncomfortable, like emotionally uncomfortable. I feel like there's a lot behind me and I need to turn around and take a look at what's behind me. And it seems to be like swarms and swarms and swarms and swarms of, of bees gone mad. Okay. Like stinging bees. There's a big black kind of swarm of dust as well. Like sand. There's seems to be like a burnt sky with black clouds and thunder and lightning going on in here. I don't know what it is about the tall tree, but it, the scene is a circle and then this tree takes up the center and then it, the two sides are glowing red. And I keep thinking of a nose for some reason, like a nose turned upright and then you can see the nostrils on the side and then there's like the bridge of the nose. I think of a nose, okay? It's too much for you. You're trying not to let things get to you. You're trying not to let things be too much for you, but you're, you're running into this tree because you, you're going to have to catch up with something of yourself, okay? Something of balance, something of your life lessons. I, I'm not fully understanding what it is just yet. Okay. This is horrible. Uh, so you, you, this is awful. So you blink and there's all these, it's basically like they're bugs, like flies, okay? But they have wings made out of glass and they start to shred apart your brain matter. Like literally your brain is full of these like sharp winged flies and they're just cutting your brain apart and they're coming out your nose as well and you have to be strong apparently <laughs> you do have to be strong i mean i'm just looking at this shaking my head like where, where does strength come into this? I mean, this is like debilitating. I mean, it's so debilitating. I don't know. Maybe, maybe strong isn't the right method here. Maybe it's just take a vacation or something. Maybe you need to be weak. <laughs> take a vacation or something. No, no, my guides say it is correct. You will need to be strong. And I see your brain is being recreated and it looks like it's a computer system, like a huge panel, lots of different screens and buttons and things. And it's a big kind of circular computer 
room space and things are changing for you and they're changing through kind of targeted hardship and it's not always clear where or when it's coming and then you get stopped in your path yet again to then be strong as things are being recreated and it's hard on your mind so where does your sacral chakra come into this is this your sacral chakra intertwining with your third eye or other chakras because when i go to your sacral chakra i go here okay there's weird uh, the voices in here like a uh, creepy sounding uh, messengers okay <laughs> I wish so bad I could recreate these noises. It's like, <laughs> it's like I don't know, it makes me laugh. It's like I can't take you seriously. It's just so funny. Like there's like these menacing voices that are buzzing sounds and they're like creepy. And I'm just like laughing hysterically. Like, You're not taking seriously. But it's serious, okay? God, I wish I could sound like that. <laughs> I was so bad it could sound like that. And I could sound as funny as you sound right now. You're hilarious. I just see laughing. Okay. I can't stop. I can't take you seriously. Uh, they're kind of like big black jaguars. They're huge, okay? They're huge. <laughs> oh. Why is this so funny in here? I don't know. I think of like, what's his name? Like Moto Moto. Yeah, baby, you huge. You plumping. You chunky, girl. <laughs> I know, it's like these, these like jaguars are plumping. Like they're huge. I don't know. I think you Moto Moto. I think. <laughs> ah, buzzing sounds as they're speaking to you. You're really um, dealing with something here. I think you needed laughter, actually. I think laughter is some of the medicine that you need to help. It really is going to help you is laughter. I mean, you need to watch some cats vs. cucumbers. You need to, like, you really need laughter, okay? Funny movies, funny shows. Okay, I tell my guys it is very hard to I don't know how to listen to this. It is very hard for me to listen to this I'm trying to take this seriously. I really am. I will have to try really really hard not to laugh. I'll take it seriously it's a weird man and his, he has a plate for a face and his face is made out of a maze and you see a little metal ball go through the maze of his face and he's kind of like a spoon man because his a round metal head so it's like a plate but then i see attached as a spoon he's a silver spoon and then he has like a cape on like a red cape and somehow he walks They want me to look at you and see what you look like now. You're tied to a tree. You're a sacrifice. You're targeted. You're screaming, but you're not really because you have to be strong. Who's going to hear you scream anyway? I say, what if this recreation of your brain was a good thing? It looked pretty painful. It looked pretty messed up. But what if that is the, the solution? What if that's a tool that's going to work in your favor here? Your hands are tied. And somehow with your hands tied, it's affecting your ability to use your own mind here. I say you want your hands to be tied because you want a reason why you can't fight back anymore. You, you tied your own hands because you wanted a reason why you couldn't fight back anymore. So your hands aren't tied anymore. And you're not ever going to be allowed to tie them. 
because you're going to choose to say I need a vacation when you need a vacation. Now that's the only way that your hands are just won't ever be tied because you just you're doing the thing you need to find serenity. Look into the face of this strange maze, a spoon, silver spoon man. He's here for a reason. These strange black um, uh, jaguar things here for a reason. This dark storm here for a reason. You say that it doesn't matter what you do, they don't. It doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter what you do. It just. It's like there are some that will respect you and some that won't, that won't ever respect you. And they don't go away. So if they don't respect me, then they're possessive over not respecting me. And it doesn't matter what I say or what I do, they will not go away. So and then they're. Um, they're just there to torture you, I guess. Like you can't make them go away. This is really causing you to have a kind of an imploding sensation on your third eye. I say, this is too much sound. I'm going to go around the tree. I'm going to leave you here to deal with this. And I'm going to go around the tree and we're going to see what's on the other side of this tree here. Nothing wants you to go to the other side of this tree. Everything wants to, it's almost like break you down. It's like everything wants to break you down. On the other side of this tree is nothing. It just glows red everywhere. There's nothing here. You're nervous. You don't want me to go there. You don't want me to go in there. I think you're full of, um, I think you're creating a lot of your own problems out of fear of some kind of not having any problems at all. Isn't that a strange fear? But I guarantee there's those of us have a fear of a life without problems. Maybe would maybe be boring. I, I mean... We don't know all the strange and mysterious ways our subconscious world works. <laughs> My guides say no, that's not quite right. Okay. So then you don't have a fear of a life without problems. Okay, so what... They say that you more like you would hold yourself responsible or accountable for too much and not be sure how to maybe lighten the load because you would never know how to have a lighter load perhaps is that right they want me to try to bring you into this space to disconnect you from all of that for a moment so now I'm recreating you here. There's a mom and a dad and a little child and you're running to mommy and daddy. And they do not hug you back. And now I see that you are like um, trying to get their attention. I see you can hold a handstand and you can do it on one hand even. And then you look up even from the handstand to see if they're watching, to see if they will be proud of you. And they don't see you at all. I see actually a soap opera on the TV and then I see a phone in hand. And it doesn't matter what you can do. It's you. And you don't exist to mom and dad.
And you're so talented. I mean, what are you building now? To try to get them to see you. I don't know what to say. This is a real scenario going on in here, in your sacral chakra. I'm looking right now at what represents mom and dad and trying to get them to see what you're up to so you can have that because it's all you want. I'm not sure that, okay, hear me out, because I've decided they aren't real people. Because real people would see you, and these people appear to be real, but they are not real people. Otherwise, they would see you. Only real people will see you. And it's strange, because then... You're just alone now. I don't think that's true either. I mean, look at... Baby, you huge. <laughs> look at all these weird silver spoon men with the maze. Like, there's so many that... <laughs> that see you. No, you're alone. And you're in like a, I guess, I don't remember this book very well. And it's like where the red fern grows. I keep hearing that, but it, I just see red. Like, it's almost like bushes that have red colored leaves. And everything is red here and it glows red. The sky, the ground, the, everything, the bushes, everything gl grow, gl glows red. And there's a heart that beats in the center and these bushes have thorns. And the heart glows red as well. Hmm. And then I go into the heart. And there's really nothing here. It's kind of just like a it's full of a, I guess, like, w if you opened up a jelly bean and it has that, like, jelly substance, it's just, like, full of, like, a jelly substance inside. And there's just a very long time of waiting. Hmm. It's just a very long time of waiting. I, I, everything's dormant right now. It's just waiting and there's timelessness and who knows, a million years could have passed right now. It's just uh, waiting, that's all it is. I don't feel like I'm impatient. I don't even feel like I'm patient. I just feel like I'm aware and deactivated and just waiting, I guess. I don't know why I'm that this is like you are waiting in your heart and you're not dreaming of something better. And I expected there to be some kind of, I don't know, desire, I suppose. Oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. You're going to dream, all right? And in the dream, you're going to get your parents' attention. They're going to see you. And it's just a dream because they're not real people in this dream. They're just parents that actually saw you, okay? And you're jumping up and down and you're clapping. 
but I see that because the parents see you, you never learn how to do a handstand with just one hand and hold it. You never learn how to build this crazy structure. You never learn how to do really anything, but just, you just never felt compelled to. In this dream, you just were hugged. And you were never asked to be anybody more than just a name and a body, basically. You were just loved, and you were just loved for existing. And you find this oddly unfulfilling. You want, don't want to be just loved for just existing. You want to be loved for the things that you do. Hmm. You want to be loved because you earned that love. Hmm. This is very sad. It's really harsh because you are walking to the heart and I ask you what these others mean to you, the Black Panthers and the weird voice and blah, blah, blah. That stuff. What you were up against when the tree stopped you and you had to be strong, what did, does that mean to you now after we've seen what's on the other side of the tree? You say you don't know why you fight with them. But you kind of do know why. I feel anger in you about that. And you don't know why you focus on these basically problem people. I say, did you want them to love you? Do you want them to care about you? You say, I don't know. I say, well, why don't we recreate ourselves by the tree and you can decide if you want to tie your hands behind your back or whatnot. And, and we'll see if you want them to love you or not. So I changed the demeanor of these black panthers and they actually become like little kids. And this uh, maze face uh, silver spoon man, he's just like kind of an odd, like nice elvish man, actually. Like, I kind of, I guess he's kind of skipping through a forest. And he has, he's friends with goats with really big horns. I just, and it's funny for some reason. It's very funny. He's a very funny personality. And the children are playful. They just want to play all the time. The panthers are just playful. And then, what about the bees? What about the storm? Do the bees love you? Can they love you? They start to look like flowers, lots and lots and lots and lots of flowers that are yellow. And you smell the fragrance of the flowers and it makes you cry. And you fall to your knees and you say, I cannot have these things that make me happy. That's what you say. Why? Uh, 
I don't know, there's no answer to why it just paused. Just looking right now. I start to see you step towards these children and they hug you and you step towards the spoon man and he wants you to go into the forest and just have fun and play in the forest and the flowers speak to you and they, they're like little horns that play little songs for you. And you're sad because what represents mom and dad is not there. But what is there is like all this other stuff. But you didn't want to be loved by this other stuff. You just wanted to be loved by your parents. <laughs> what it was <laughs> if you can't have that then it's like you can't have happiness it's something like this <sighs> I guess what's the solution here and the, the kind of echo that we're already working on it and the solution this is already the solution. It's it's quite surreal, to be honest. <sighs> because there's a, a deep layer here of what a mom and a dad represents to a child is everything. And how the child feels receptive to that love is everything it's almost like your whole life construct is built upon it what's that say about all of us you know literally what does that say about the whole human race because it feels to me that this this message is bigger than that like if mom and dad is is god and mom and dad to a child represents something that profound what then would God represent to the human race based upon how we felt loved by our parents that's what I'm running into here I feel like there's different levels of meaning to this <sighs> it's interesting you you're identifying your sacral chakra, which it's like this sacred place, the sacred part of who you are. It's your, your sexual nature. It's your intimate connection with, with giving and receiving love. It's to a child and the connection with parents, mom and dad. And I feel so much of your heart energy connected to this too. And perhaps your third eye's way of perceiving things, that your heart is a big part of this the heart of who you are I really want to interpret the meaning of being strong when it comes to your energy field here because I think I think that could be an interesting exploration is what that means exactly maybe it would be useful and your guides are reminding me that this, we are already, there's already healing taking place. We're already working through the answer. I ask you if you feel like we are working through the answer for you. If you feel that you agree with that. I wanna know if you should let go of your parents as in that want okay um, higher self what do you have to say about that I'm curious what your higher self's opinion is let's see
It's uh, not, there's no such thing as, as having something that you would have then to let go of. There's no concept of ever ha having something that you would have to let go of. Your, your concept of w whether you were loved or not loved was not something that you had or didn't have, therefore could not have let go of it. You can't let go of something that... It's, it's almost like saying that in life, anything and everything, hold on, in life, is, is based upon your perception of what you have or don't have. It's not based upon ever having something or not having something. Somehow that is a really good answer for you. Because you start to realize that they are just people too. And perhaps their relationship with their parents felt maybe like they were non-existent. That they're just people too. Somehow this is a very strong answer for you. That they're people too. And what you were doing was trying to bring joy to their life by being the best you you could be and that is a gift and a blessing that you bestowed upon them to receive it in your mind was your idea of something you could give to them but they could never really have it anyway that they could appreciate you or not is how it might have felt mm. but they're people too it's it's interesting because it somehow this is calming calming the waters I feel like this there's waters that are calming and there's rippling and the ripples are disappearing and I feel like it's a peaceful day your solar plexus is definitely a part of this too your emotional gut because I feel like there's things that you're not working on in your emotions maybe because the sounds in other places are so much louder but really your emotions would, I would say would be the loudest thing maybe it's easier to be strong in your head than to feel your feelings Let's go just look at your, or your solar plexus here for a moment. It's just like walking into a room where all the wires have been cut and things are sparking everywhere. And there's a man that, that kind of laughs with some wire cutters and he's just like running rampant, just cutting the wires in your emotional gut. It's like trying to derail you emotionally it's like like an attempt to literally target and why it's like here comes targeting again you're being targeted I just put my hand on one of these cables like they're really thick ones and I just put my hand and I it's like I'm mending what was cut in half sparking it just seems to be put back together again and I see you're angry and you scream at me and you say things will never be put back together again and you, you take something and it's like a bag full of bowling balls and you throw it at me and I just like I don't know I just feel like being funny again and I just like I let this bag like take me away with it I'm like Woo! like like a funny scene and I like and then I'm just like, and like the stars are spinning around my head. I was like trying to make it funny somehow. Like, you got me. <laughs> you did it. You got me. <laughs> Again, you need to, you need laughter. Maybe there aren't, uh, maybe that, maybe, What's your higher self want to tell you about this exactly? <sighs> I 
Higher Self comes into this room and really scold, scolding eyes like, are you going to pick up this mess or not? Are you going to fix it or not? When things are broken, you're just going to let them stay broken? Is that what you're going to do about it? And her eyes look like electricity. And you kind of put your head down and you say, no, master, I, I will not leave this mess. And then you start to mend all of these wires, cables, and you maintain neutrality. The only way to be sure is to be neutral. And the higher self says, no, 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 no. It becomes a really massive unicorn, starts to glow with light and says, no, you, this is not the way. This is not the way. Nurture, nurture is the way. You're not a slave to your problems. Um, you enjoy nurturing problems, mending them, mend the problems. And I see that the unicorn is helping you mend the problems and you and your higher self are working together to mend your emotions, not with neutrality, with, with nurture, nurture. And that's, that's the key is nurture. You need nurture. And that's also why it's impacting your inner child. It's impacting your sacral chakra. The need for nurture. Impacting your heart. Like you to come to life again. To, to glow and, and be happy in life. That's what I see. All right. Wow. What? What if? <laughs> what a process, huh? It's like you just never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> Thank you very much for being open to this experience and sharing with all of us. I guarantee, many people watching your session are really going to relate to it, and that this will help people. All right. Thank you again. Thank you everybody for watching and I wish you all an amazing day.